Have you ever heard the cliche, you can't have your cake and eat it too? Well, that's a cliche that's really reduced down that there's always some sacrifice involved in any situation. Now, we're not here to talk about life <laughs> scenarios here, but it kind of relates to our topic today on CAP Theorem. Hello, my name is Jamil Spain, developer advocate with IBM. Now, this theorem really has to, we have to give our credit due. It came from a person called Eric Brewer, who developed this while he was getting his PhD at MIT, roughly in the 2000s. And the topic of conversation here was cloud native design, uh, distributed architectures, and this principle really relates down to how databases are designed to be distributed in nature. So, uh, now that we've defined uh, where the background comes from, Let's really break down the acronyms now of CAP, CAP. And the C stands for consistency, which really deduces down that all the clients need to be able to get the same data at the same time, all right? All the data is consistent there. The next, the A, availability. All right, as data is written, is it actually always replicated across to all the nodes that are there? And the last is, uh, the P is for partition. And we're gonna add that on really partition tolerance. Okay. And so that really is if, let's say, one or more of the nodes uh, come out of communication out of sync, how well do they recover from that? Do they have a procedure for balancing those out and getting reconnected and what happens after that occurs? So now we have all three that are here, C, A, P. Let's talk about how it's represented and how it's actually talked about and how you'll find it. So let's I'll put these down. You'll often see them pictured this way. CAP with three circles, and really you'll, you'll see these acronyms that come from what are you gonna achieve? Now, I said we're gonna relate this back to you can't have your cake and eat it too. Well, that's the situation here. You really can only have two out of the three at any given time. So in a lot of your distributed architectures, your decisions you make on which database to use, um, uh, you know, it really depends about what's most important here. But let's talk about how these pair up. So if I take the intersection of these, this would be a CA, CP, and AP, okay? And I'm gonna outline these as we go from here. So when it comes down to it, let's take a database like MongoDB. All right, this is gonna be focused on the consistency and partition, partition tolerance uh, there. Why from a consistency? Well, we know from the design of, of Mongo is that it has a primary node and there are also secondary nodes. All the writes go to the primary node and all the secondary nodes as, they, as you add multiple ones they all replicate directly from the master's logs of transactions and everything is there. So you get the consistency from there that, um, that data will always be in sync uh, because you're always writing in one place and it's always reading, the reads always come from that one source of, 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 of action there. Um, so in the, in the event, so we have the consistency, that, that checks box, that piece there. Now from a petition, let's say what happens in the event that one of the nodes go down, your master goes down, um, uh, your, your, your primary node goes down, then one, there's a brief moment where um, an election process has to happen. One of the secondary nodes becomes the primary node, and then, you know, if that other primary comes back up, it becomes then a secondary node. So in that brief time, that, that procedure is handled, the partition balancing there, but in that time that the, the primary goes down, it's not going to allow any reads to, I mean, writes to occur. Uh, uh, to that situation there. So you have a moment where there's gonna be all reads that are available, all right? 
And so that's really how a lot of these kind of pair up to match uh, based upon what you need. What's most important for you is, uh, you know, having that recovery model in place um, and being able to always guarantee that consistency in the event that you may have some availability outage uh, there as well. So that's great for that, CP. Now let's deal with the other cross section of that, which is AP. Now here, let's take a use case of a, a, a distributed system like Apache Cassandra. And I wanted to be able to show the opposites of, 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 of variants here. With Apache Cassandra, the difference is from Mongo is that there is really no primary server. So all of the nodes are kind of, um, all the nodes are kind of independent as they go. So we're going to always have that availability, all right? They're going to always be available to serve out read-write data, all right? Um, and in the event of a partition, so with that process of, um, so you always have the availability since they're always up, always running. Now, from a petition perspective, uh, they do something called eventually they all have to synchronize with each other. And so because they're all kind of distributed, um, they're always all can read and write to each of those. They have some period where they're all syncing. Um, so you won't have always instant consistency there that you would get with MongoDB. But at least they have a, a facility set in place to be able to synchronize with each other as, let's say, one of them goes, one of the nodes goes down, they have a procedure when it comes back up, of course, it has a job of kind of catching back up to date uh, with the others there. So that kind of solves the AP for that. And so generally, you'll see on the web, think about when you look at distributed databases, what do they offer here, all right? Um, and pick two of these that you want to achieve. There may not ever be a situation where you have all three available here. Before we end this talk, I do want to talk a little bit about, let's take this a step further. As technologists, we have to challenge ourselves as well to think through a lot of the decisions we make. And for me, I thought about that we can also apply this to microservices and how you're, you make decisions about how you architect your particular components, whether they're front end, back end, or in the middle part um, as well. So think about decisions like from a web front end, um, Availability may be a concern. In that situation, you may not be able to pair two of these necessarily, but at least have in mind the piece that it wants to play. Now, we know with most microservices, they achieve the single responsibility principle that you really have one and only job that you're supposed to allocate or do in your architecture. So from a web front end, I may have multiple replicas to meet the availability because that's most important for that. I want everyone to always as you request a web page or front end, I want you, to, any client, to always be able to get responses there as well. And so then I would take, move on to the distributed tier, uh, where I then hit the, the, the back end to make sure that that suffices that it can always maybe deliver that data as well. So just kind of think about it that way, um, um, how your, how these CAP principles meet the uh, responsibility. We do SRP, single responsibility principle here. Now this just touched the iceberg here, but I definitely uh, hope this was useful in understanding the background of CAP theorem and how it can apply for you and your architectures. Thank you. If you have any questions, please drop us a line below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe.